What's up, nerds? We're your hosts this week. I am Jake. And I am Chad. This week, we're sponsored by Ray's Energy Drinks. We are also sponsored by Crybaby Craig's Hot Sauce. So we will be talking about The Legend of Vox Machina uh, Season 2 uh, on Amazon Prime Video. And we will also be talking about The Last of Us now streaming on HBO Max. So let's get into it. This is the All Things Nerd Podcast. Tink. Tink. <laughs> Welcome back, nerds, to the All Things Nerd podcast, your weekly dive into all things nerd. Jake. Jackson. <laughs> that doesn't work. Jacoby. It's just, it's just Jackson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, unique. Yeah. Because crystals. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry. How was your Stubbed week? Two ends, but now where you think. <laughs> <laughs> two ends and a Y. Yeah. Now you think. <laughs> How was your week, though? Uh, it was good. Uh, uh, we bought a new couch because Ooh. I won't name anybody, but a friend of ours is moving on with his life, her life, their life, because <laughs> his life already ruined it. Uh, <laughs> and he doesn't have any furniture, so we're giving him our basement couch, which is a little too big for our basement anyway. So we went out yesterday and bought a new couch. Really excited about it. Uh, it's like a mechanical like recliner. It's... A little bougie, but it was on sale for like half the price, and I was like, "Dope!" <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say those things are heavy and expensive. <laughs> They're delivering it and putting it together for a hundred dollars. Thank oh, God, hell, I'm too yeah. old for that shit these days. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, other than that, we've just been prepping for our. We have a big party coming up this weekend, as you know. Uh, you will be there. A and, summer theme. Yeah. yeah, it's a Hawaiian theme. Hello. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, Luau. Or sorry, Aloha. <laughs> it's a Hawaiian theme. Aloha. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit. Uh, but other than that, that's really all I got going on this week. How about you? Well, you've been playing a lot of video games. Oh yeah, I forgot about that part. Yeah, I've been playing. Um, finally, it came out in 2018, but I'm finally <laughs> playing Spider-Man on PlayStation 4. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. It's really hard. Oh, but it's a lot of a fun. Game, though. Yeah. I'm having a good time with that. Other than the... We talked about it off screen. There's... Because you've played it all yeah. through and through. There are missions in that game where you play as Mary Jane Watson. And you literally just walk around. Yeah. It's fucking stupid. Yeah. They're they're very annoying. Just and there's, there's a, few, a lot of them. Yeah. There's... And a couple other, like, supporting characters that don't yeah. have abilities, and you just, like, walk around and then, like, crouch. Yeah. That's Avoid being it. seen by these people, and then you literally just walk behind things. It's fucking <clears throat> dumb. Yeah. The Other than that, the game is great. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. It's such a fun game. Oh, my yeah. goodness. I can't wait for you to finish that and then start playing Miles Morales. Did you play Miles Morales already? Yeah. Oh, you did? You yeah. beat it already? Nice. Yeah, I I didn't get it right People when like it came it out. Do you like it better than Spider-Man? Equally? I'd say pretty close to equally. I really liked the Spider-Man story. Uh, mm. The Miles Morales story is pretty awesome also. Um, <clears throat> Just not <and> amazing. Like, <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> no, it it's a ton of fun as well. Um mm. Title of your sex name. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and he's got like different abilities, which is cool to. Yeah. To, like, oh, yeah. I didn't even think about yeah. that. That will be fun. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Like when he can turn invisible. Mm -hmm. Anyone that's read the comics or seen Into the Spider Verse knows this yeah. and has like his electric, little, like, webs. electric shock thing. Which you kind of have in Spider Man. Like we were talking about that. Yeah. Through, you have the through like tech and stuff yeah. like that. So, so, how about you? How was your week? Uh, my week was pretty good. Um, yeah, didn't do a whole lot. Uh, been playing a lot of video games as well uh, on on the PC more. Um, and then I 
played D&D last night, which was awesome. It was a lot of fun. We normally play for like three, three and a half hours uh, at a time. Uh, and last night we played for like five and a half hours. Yeah. We played in, yeah. we started at 7.30 yeah, little... and we played until like one thirty, and we're drinking and joking around the whole time. And I was going to so, say, you're a little worse for wear today. Yeah, I was feeling rough this morning, <laughs> that's for sure. <clears throat> but yeah, it was a good time. Um, in other news, uh, we had briefly mentioned it on the show in the past, but uh, the whole thing going on with Alec Baldwin uh, from when the director for his upcoming Rust. film, Rust, uh, was accidentally killed from a, a prop gun or prop bullet. Projectile, projectile from a yeah. prop gun, yeah. Uh, shot and killed her, which was very unfortunate. Um, but he is being, charges are being, are being have been brought against him. Yeah. Uh, for like involuntary manslaughter or something along the lines of, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, that. So which... then it's there's been a debate online as whether he should be charged with that or not because some people are like it wasn't his fault, blah blah blah, and other people are he was the producer of the show, it was his fault. So we thought we'd at least weigh in a little bit. Yeah, I mean, there. You're right. It it wasn't his fault. That's why it's involuntary manslaughter. It's not a mm-hmm. murder charge. Yeah. Um. But I mean, he still has some form of responsibility behind it. <clears throat> I mean, he's producing the show. Um. And my only thing with that is, if charges are being brought against him, the the props manager should also have the same charges, uh, because that was his literal job to make sure yeah. that it was operating safely i mean there wasn't like a live round or anything in it it was still a blank yeah. but but with the blank a... there's still an explosion yeah and and there's like a cap still uh this is kind of where like shooting your wad kind of comes from it's also from like shotguns and stuff like that there's basically like a wad in there so that you know it's just not it keeps the the powder from just like falling out of an empty case. Mm-hmm. Um, most of the time the wads burn when they're fired, but sometimes they don't, uh, which is where yeah. that term comes from. But that was more than likely what the projectile was that was fired out of yeah. the actual gun. And then that makes me wonder why uh, two things. One, why you don't just use a, like a completely fake gun. Because I mean, if you look at, like I t- told you off camera is like in the MCU, like uh, Sam Sam Jackson is holding like a wood gun and they just CGI like a gun and it's whatever. Um, and if you don't have the budget for that, which maybe they don't, um, why not just not put bullets in the gun at all, whether they're blanks or otherwise, because they have to add all those sound effects in later anyways so yeah. why not just pull the trigger with nothing in the fucking gun so there is no potential projectile or accidental bullet this isn't the first time that this has happened <coughs> uh brandon lee bruce lee's son famously died uh filming the crow for um, the same thing projectile from a gun uh yeah. flew out and killed him yeah i agree with you um also i mean props are so good nowadays you know like props departments are so talented there's so many incredible people that could create a fake gun that when you pull the trigger it's still spring loaded so you know like the slide pops back gives a little bit of recoil like a gun would because you're gonna add the explosion but still no explosion yeah so it's just like airs and air airs and spring air and springs uh doing it because you're gonna add the the cgi anyways to and the sound effect later yeah you know like why are we not doing that yeah it's (laughs) it's wild because literally people can die from the way it's being done now so Mm -hmm. do better hollywood as a whole and uh we just wanted to kind of weigh in on that and give an update as to condolences to both you know it sucks that that person is dead it also sucks i can't imagine 
being Alec Baldwin and fucking shooting somebody yeah. and ki- and killing them like that's got to just rock you to the core you know you're not yeah prepared for something like that you know so uh, you know sad cuz i mean it very truly was an involved. accident yeah it's just a very unfortunate situation mm-hmm. but i am glad that someone is being held responsible instead of just chalking it up to well sometimes these things happen cuz they shouldn't and they don't have to yeah so Sorry, work. Had to answer. No, you're totally fine. <laughs> uh, and uh, to not be such a, a downer now, let's talk about our first sponsor so we can get into the rest of our episode. Get it, girl. Yes. Uh, <laughs> raise energy drinks. We've been talking about them for a long time now. You all know. Zero sugar, zero calorie, zero crash. If you don't like energy drinks, there's so much more to choose from from their website. Uh, from protein, pre-workout, cake in a cup, pancakes, all that. So listen up, learn how to save 15%. We'll be right back with you to talk about the legend of Vox Machina. What's up, nerds? I wanted to take a minute and talk to you about Ray's Energy, an incredible energy drink that provides max energy with zero crash. Ray's Energy takes a giant leap of faith with instilling a high-quality formula to bring a powerful yet sustained energy energetic experience to help you push your workouts and focus to the next level perfect for anyone at any time empowered by their refresh formula technology raise energy delivers a performance enhancing energy drink that aids in multiple different categories that include targeted focus better recovery time improved clean energy levels and a boost in stamina and hydration but most importantly Every can of Ray's Energy has absolutely zero calories, zero sugar, and zero carbohydrates to give you a smarter and healthier option. So don't settle for an energy drink that contains more sugar and carbohydrates than you can count. Instead, head over to repsports.com. That's R-E-P-P-S-P-O-R-T-S dot com and use the promo code NERDPODCAST at checkout for 15% off your order. Or if you don't know what you want, go ahead and click the link that's in the description for, to get a $50 sample pack for free. All you do is you cover the cost of shipping. Again, make sure you use promo code NERDPODCAST at checkout to let them know that we sent you. Okay, nerds, we are going to talk about The Legend of Vox Machina Season 2 on Amazon Prime. Uh, before we get started, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched it... <sighs> Go watch it. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Didn't watch it. Why? It's fucking amazing. I know. <laughs> uh, go watch it. Come back. Listen to this part. Um. Anyways, that's enough. Uh, fucking a. They did. <laughs> they released another three episodes. So mm-hmm. um, I thought maybe they just released the first three episodes and we're gonna do one episode at a time after that. <clears throat> but nope, they released another three episodes. So. Four, five, and six are available um, now. And I watched all three of them. You watched the first two, or the four and yeah. five. I watched four, five, and six. Uh, but fuck yeah, this show is awesome. It's so good. Yeah. <clears throat> As we kind of expected. <laughs> Which we even called last week. Yeah. Vex yeah. isn't dead. Like yeah. she, she not dead. <laughs> I mean, it's... Dungeons and Dragons. It's really hard to stay dead. Yeah. Uh, it can happen, but it's very hard. Hmm. It's easier to stay dead in a comic book than it is in Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah. Uh, it looks like they're trying to revive her through, you know, like magic and spells and healing, uh, but it's not working. Uh, so Vax kind of like makes a deal with an entity whose tomb they are in yeah and they like it was a weird deal because like didn't say anything to him he was just like take me instead you bitch and she was just like looks at him and was like okay yeah (laughs) (laughs) and lets uh vex's like soul drop back into her body but she doesn't kill vax either like instead he becomes like we're saying her, like a, her, because it's like say, the, the kind of like a of, vessel, maybe, yeah. yeah, or like her chosen champion, or yeah, like 
the warrior. Yeah. He's kind of becoming a twat, though. Yeah. With the vestige. it's They're calling it a vestige, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is like a suit of armor that looks like raven, like a raven. It kind of looks like Jon Snow's gear at the wall. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's kind of got a little fucking, a little baditude all of a sudden. <laughs> baditude. <laughs> That's a bad attitude in case Oh, I did. thought it was because like his little cloak looks like wings so like i was thinking like bat wings like a, oh no no i was like you know there's you know, the, you could, the batmobile but when yeah, he's grumpy yeah, yeah. he has a bad you, you thought it was an animal yeah, yeah no you can have an attitude or you could have a bad attitude which is a bad attitude or you could have a ratitude which is like a rad attitude yeah yeah what's up bro? <laughs> <laughs> can you have a Never mind, I'm not going to go there, because some people don't like that word. I was going to say... Moist? <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. No, I was going to say cuntitude. Oh, what? Cuntitude? Oh. A cunty attitude? <laughs> uh, I, just call that, I just call that being cunty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, short, it's cunty. shorthand. You know? Being a little cunty. It's the common vernacular. I have never actually in my entire life ever called somebody that word. I do it. Really? Once. (laughs) They deserved it. You know the story. I have a few times. It's (laughs) always when it's justified. Yeah. Usually it's like at the TV. Mm. Like a character I don't like. I'm like. They're kind of cunty. They're kind of (laughs) cunty. Don't like that person. Um, <laughs> <laughs> back on track here. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> Fox McCona. Yeah, yeah. So, Vax has a little cunty attitude now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Cuntitude. Thank you. <clears throat> it's catching on. We did it. <laughs> we made a word. Somebody call Urban Dictionary. <laughs> <clears throat> uh <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, like the armor is definitely enchanted, and it gives him, you know, speed and agility, and it's pretty awesome when it, it's actually used, like in a fight scene, because yeah. he's just fucking Naruto running. Just yeah, I was like, very anime. Yeah, it's like, but you it's guys all got sweet. that right. Yeah, <laughs> completely understood you. <laughs> Oh man! Uh we get to see where. Oh fuck! We should. What's the name of the bear? Trinket. Trinket. Uh we get to see where Trinket came from, which is kind of cool. Um, this is sad. It was a Bambi origin story. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of. Only Vax was the one who like <laughs> put it out of its misery. <laughs> well, it had like air. The Trinket's yeah. mother had was basically was dying. dying. Um. Yeah. So they. Showed at mercy by giving it a, a quick death. Mm. Um, and then there was a little bear cub that they took. Mm-hmm. And that's why Trinket is so adorable. <laughs> Voiced by the legendary Cheech. Cheech, Cheech Marin. Marin. Yeah. Which is hilarious. It just goes, if, I, if, I, <laughs> if I remembered the actual song, I would have sang it just now, but it it kind of sounds racist if you don't remember the rest of the words. <laughs> but the song from uh, Cheech and Chong that Cheech Marin sings about weed, it's called Beaners. Cause he's talking <laughs> about, but he's not talking about people. He's talking about like the the seeds in the weed. Yeah. <laughs> he's, and he's like, Beaners. <laughs> and he's like talking about pulling the, the, the seeds. seeds and stems out of the weed. But... <laughs> Without the rest of the song, if I just sang Beaners, it would sound terrible. So, Kind of like what you did, but you at least gave context. Yeah. 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 So, covered yourself. It's good. Should we just play uh, Taylor Swift? Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. (laughs) (laughs) (coughs) Oh. So funny. We're funny, damn it. <laughs> um, yeah, but like this, we were a little disappointed. 
uh, that Percy didn't get hit a little bit harder from Vax about the whole, you know, oh, oh, oh. sorry I for killing like, your I sister hate thing. Percy. What are you talking about? Yeah. I'm disappointed. Yeah. No, Percy sucks. <laughs> um, we, well, we know, like, the last uh, uh, episode three ending, after Vax told, I'm going down into this cavern, nobody touch anything until I get back. And the first thing Percy does is, like, check this out. And Vex is like, my brother said not to touch anything. And he's like, do you always listen to everything your brother d- says? And he touches it, and she fucking died as a result of it. Yeah. Um, so we were hoping that Va- I Even when I watched that happen, I was like, oh, it's like Vax is going to kick his ass. He hit him, like, one time. And I was like, oh, pff, lame. I mean, he rocked him. Like, whatever. But also, I mean, it's like punching a branch that's no longer attached to a tree of course it's gonna fall <laughs> over but yeah yeah like i would percy like i would have liked to apologize to see... and yeah. vax is like i don't want to talk about it and percy like instead of being like you're right i'm sorry it was like no let me apologize and vax is just like <laughs> and down goes person he's like yep yeah, okay yeah i would have liked to see him just like pummel him and like the other like members of the team have to like pull him off of him i hate percy he's yeah. the worst the worst character on the show now yeah and we've gotten into it i won't go into it he was better the first season he was still a bitch in the first season but at least there was like context to him now he's just a guy with a gun and just whiny just a republican There are so many parallels there. <laughs> I have nobility. People should listen to me. Yeah. Look at me. Guns. I'm rich. Here's my yeah. gun. Uh, and a crybaby. Yeah. Things Anyways. aren't going my way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> uh <clears throat> Just kind There's of, a lot going on in these yeah, episodes. There is a lot yeah. going on. <clears throat> and, I mean... Aside from our jokes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Grog, who we know took that sword from the vampire dude at, uh, from the first season, mm-hmm. where it basically drinks the blood of his enemies for him and, to, and, like, gives him power and makes it sharper and things like that, is corrupting him. Mm-hmm. You gotta watch the third, ep- third sixth episode. Yeah. So yeah, something happens. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I'm not telling you. I'm just saying something happens. No. <laughs> I have my ideas. No. What's your idea? I won't tell you if you're right or not. I just want to know. Uh, that he goes into a rage and turns on the the party and hurts Pike. No. Good. Because that's kind of like he like is having visions of that happening. He had a vision of him killing like the entire group. Yeah, yeah. And there's a part where they're fighting. Uh, they're kind of like <clears throat> mini mini dragons that are coming from the fire plane. Mm-hmm. Um, and as he's slicing them down with a the sword, they just kind of like bleed lava mm-hmm. instead of blood. blood. So the sword is like, I need blood. I hunger yeah. for blood. He's like, these things don't have blood. Like, he's talking to the sword. Mm-hmm. And he's like, then find me some. And, like, he looks over his shoulder and Pike is just, like, right there. And I was like, no. Yeah. There's also a part, I think it's in episode two. And I'm sorry if it's not. But there's a part where the sword tells him, like, find me blood. And Grog is like, there, there is no blood. And he goes, find me some or I'll find it myself. Oh, yeah. That's during that same fight. That is okay. Good. Yeah. I was like, shit. I feel bad if this <clears throat> is in episode three or six, but yeah, um, I keep screwing that up because I'm like, it was <laughs> three episodes, but yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah. Grog just like keeps talking to the sword. There's even a part where like he takes the sword with him to go take a dump in the woods and just like sitting there talking to it. And Scanlan is like, I'm gonna go. Grog's been gone a while. I'm gonna go check on him. So he like hears Grog talking. He's like, What are you doing? Are you talking to your poop? And Grog's like, oh, yeah, just establishing my dominance. <laughs> play play me a song. Sing me a song. It'll help. Yeah. 
and then we get a, good a beautiful song from Scanlan about yeah. falling in love at an outhouse. How's it go again? Uh, uh, that had an outhouse like on the edge of. Was it an outhouse? Is that what he says? Yeah. Is it at an outhouse at the edge of the world. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> but it's beautiful. He's got a much better voice than me. It actually sounds really good. Yeah. And like, you haven't watched the sixth episode yet, but there is actually a full length, not that song, but a full length song uh, from him. And it's really fucking good. I'm yeah. like literally probably going to download it. <laughs> it's <laughs> good. <clears throat> well, I mean, like in season one, he like <clears throat> plays a metal song. Mm hmm. It was just super awesome. When this is a little slower and sadder, yeah. but it's really good. I have it. I think I have it pulled up on YouTube. I won't play it. I just the name of it. Nope, YouTube did not keep <laughs> it where I was. So never mind. Yeah, but, but yeah. When it looks when Scanlan yeah. actually like plays a song to use like his bard, like mm -hmm. bardic inspiration is basically what it is. Um. Those songs always slap. They're so good. Mm. <laughs> this one's really good. Yeah, it's and it gives us more depth about his character, which is really cool because so far he's really just been like jokes and yeah, inappropriate. And but he's like the only one like, that we haven't had any like yeah depth to. And he's like my one of my favorite characters. Yeah, yeah. So it was kind of nice. Like, oh, he's yeah. not a douchebag all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then we see Keyleth. Just, oh my god. she I think she might be my overall favorite. But Keyleth, Pike, and Scanlan are my, th my top three from the party. Um, but she is so badass. Uh, she's an elemental uh, elf, like elf? a high elf. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't think that this takes place in the Eberron world of Dungeons and Dragons. They they um, literally go to like Eberron, like to use. No, Eberron is the name of the planet oh, from Eber Eberron. Yeah. I thought you said Ever Run. I was like, they literally went there oh. in like <laughs> episode two. What are you talking about? <clears throat> no, uh, Eberron is the name of the. <clears throat> one of the planets that's in the universe of D and D. Um, but it seems like she's almost in line with like in, uh, the Eldrin, which are magical elves that are much more powerful because they draw their power from like the seasons and the elements and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I did make while we were watching it, like, Avatar I made a jokes? Pocahontas joke. Oh. <laughs> Her mom was like, you got to listen to, like, whatever. And there was, like, wind started blowing and leaves. And I was like, paint with all the colors of the wind. <laughs> like... <laughs> but uh, anyways, keep going. Sorry. Oh, I... It's probably more embarrassing <laughs> for me because I live alone. Uh, but <laughs> during that same scene... When it's like the flashback of Keyleth as a child, like talking to her mother and like showing mm. that, you know, they can control water, fire, air, earth. And I was like, and when they needed her most, she disappeared, never to be seen again. That was the last avatar. <laughs> <laughs> because like it, they are <clears throat> air powered people. And she yeah. literally shows that she can manipulate all four elements. And then she walks away. And I was like, oh, I've seen this before. She, she was a bad... Keyleth was a badass in episode five. Yeah, I almost said two. I'm like, <laughs> <"Ugh>, math. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> uh, dude, that was sweet. She goes through the fire and then she turns into like a giant fire demon and like, yeah. oh, it was so cool. That was a good episode. And literally closed the, the portal to the fire plane from the inside. Mm. Mm. And then just like probably turned into air to like come yeah. back out. It was sweet. It was cool. I wanted to make a really inappropriate <laughs> sex joke there. Do it. Because, you know, you know, there was a little bit of air trapped inside. So just she quaffed her way out. <laughs> it's a quaff. <laughs> Sorry, mom. 
Nice. Nice. <laughs> you were trying so hard not to laugh as hard as you wanted to. <laughs> uh, oh, pros sorry, and cons. Everyone. I think all we really have is for a con is Percy. First of all, yeah, he, he's just <clears throat> he needs a, a tude check, if you will. Mm. Uh, he needs to go from a batitude to a ratitude real soon. Yeah, and uh, he needs like actual like character growth yeah there's a lot of shit that we are skipping over but i mean we don't want to break down the whole episodes for you guys just go watch it it's super good hopefully what we've mentioned here is enough to like make you want to watch it that's what we're trying to do go watch it be nerds with us it's super good plus uh so this show is based off of campaign one or campaign two from critical role It's a bunch of, I mean, we mentioned this last week. (coughs) Critical Role is a YouTube channel uh, of a bunch of people in Hollywood, mostly voice actors, but some are, you know, on-screen actors as well, um, where they get together and they play Dungeons and Dragons. And there's like the main party, which, you know, is like Pike, Grog, Scanlan, Vax, Vax, Percy, and Keyleth. But then they have like celebrity guests on like... Uh, Stephanie Beatrice uh, from like, Rosa Brooklyn, Diaz. Brooklyn Nine Nine, Encanto. Um, David. She was Tennant. in Encanto. Yeah, she was one of. The, she was the main girl with the glasses. That was Rosa. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit! I love that movie, dude. That's gonna blow Nicole's mind when I tell her that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Now I gotta like. I won't do it right now. When we're done, but I gotta like look up like a really son of a bitch. Yeah. Well, the more you know. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> oh, sorry. I did imagination. <laughs> Just the stars. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, in news al- along the lines of the Legend of Vox Machina, uh, basically just critical role, is that they're campaign that they just finished that has completely different characters has also been picked up by Amazon Prime to be a new show Ooh, nice. once they know that. finish Legends of Vox Machina. Like and uh, I think there was something else. There's It's like a multi-part, <clears throat> like huge deal that they signed with Amazon uh, for Critical Role to the point where I think that they're also going to maybe produce Deuce their like actual gameplay show hmm. which cool. is gonna be sweet yeah i think it's gonna help get a lot of more people into dungeons and dragons as well because this and stranger things have kind of re-sparked interest in in the game for a new generation Indeed. which is yeah. sweet and now there's <clears throat> the movie coming out too with chris pine yeah and uh, I think his name's actually I think his name's Will Smith, but it's the kid. He's like a young kid. Is it Will Smith? I know who you're talking about. He was in Jurassic Park, the Jurassic World. I mean, yeah, I know um, who you're talking about. I can't remember his name. I thought his name was Will Will Smith because I was like, oh, the fuck. But yeah. Um. um who else was? <clears throat> uh, uh, Michelle Rodriguez is in it. Hugh Grant is in it. Yeah, Hugh Grant. Yep, 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 yep. <coughs> I don't and, know. Uh, I don't know the Justice Smith. Justice Smith. My bad. <laughs> Very far off. And I then, knew there was a Smith. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then Sophia Lillis uh, is going to be in it. I don't know her from anything, uh, but she basically is going to play a live action version of Keyleth by the nice. looks of it. Um, you know, being able to transform into animals and as an elf that has magical abilities. Mm. So kind of cool. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll see. I am iffy. I think that it looks like it, it's going to be fun and good. I, and I'm sure yeah. that there's going to be a lot of like nerd fan service. I'm not <clears throat> entirely convinced that it's going to be a, a decent story. I feel like it's going to be so. like doom. I think they're just like, I think it was a money grab. Hey, like, like you said, there's been a lot of a lot more interest brought up around 
uh, D and D lately. Yeah. And they're like, hey, man, this is becoming popular again. Let's fucking make a movie. Even though you know they made one a while back. Terrible, terrible, terrible thing. Yeah. Um. But now they, you know, doing another one, and it's Chris Pine is in it, which gives me a little hope. I yeah. love Chris Pine. Like, let's get it. But I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. It'll it'll at least have a lot of <clears throat> like fan <clears throat> service. Yeah, we'll uh, check it out and we'll review it on the on the podcast. Yeah, it comes out yeah. next month, I think March. Yeah, end of March from now. <laughs> Actually, that time you're right. <laughs> um. <laughs> oof. Yeah. Is that it? Is that all uh, we had? Yeah, that's it. Tell them about yeah. our our other sponsor, which is pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. Sponsor number two is Crybaby Craig's Hot Sauce. It's a pickled habanero and garlic hot sauce that goes on practically anything. Listen up. We'll tell you more about it. Hey, you nerds. Do you love spice? Supporting small businesses? What about enhancing the flavor of your favorite foods? If you said yes to any of those... Our good friends over at Crybaby Craig's have the perfect solution for you. Crybaby Craig's is a pickled habanero and garlic hot sauce that goes perfectly with your favorite foods, adding the perfect amount of spice and enhancing the flavor of everything it touches. Started in Minneapolis by Craig back in 2012, Crybaby Craig's has become a Minneapolis and Minnesota staple in the sauce world. So head over to crybabycraigs.com and order yours today. All right, y'all friends. Um, so we're going to talk about the second episode of The Last of Us, uh, now airing and streaming on HBO and HBO Max. If you haven't watched the show, first off, why not? Secondly, spoiler alert. So if you haven't watched it and you are wanting to or planning to, tune out come back. That's plenty of time. Before we get into this episode, uh, we forgot to mention it at the start of the episode this week, but uh, Annie Wershing uh, passed away. She was in Star Trek Enterprise. No, uh, Picard. Picard. She was in both. Oh, Uh, she was in Enterprise and Picard. Got it. Yeah, she reprised her role of Liana in Picard. Um, But also, she voiced... Tess in the video game the uh, from The Last of Us. Yes. So since we forgot to mention it earlier, I kind of figured this was a good time. Uh, rest in peace. Thank you for everything you did for nerds. And condolences to her friends and family. Mm. <clears throat> now, the show itself just oh, chef's kiss mm. Mm. this show is so, so good. fucking good it's so good <clears throat> um also the flower theory that we brought up last week is confirmed yes a hundred percent hundred percent a hundred hold on a hundred percent a hundred percent that's it right i think so cool good enough (laughs) Uh, it's cool yeah it was uh we had uh through no theory of our own we uh read it somewhere else um that the fungus that was responsible for the zombie ish the zombie-esque yeah apocalypse uh was spread through flower and there was a number of hints that we mentioned last week <clears throat> and uh, this last episode last Sunday um, confirmed that that, that yeah. was true. Yeah, in episode two. Um, and just like with the first episode, it starts with a flashback. Mm-hmm. This one isn't as far back. This is just a couple months before so good. The, the main part of episode one starts before Might the it, outbreak. I think this one was a little <clears throat> creepier than the first one. It was so much more terrifying. Yeah. Because the first one was like, oh, science, and, you know, if these things happen, we could be yeah, looking at issues. this is what could happen. And then this is what did happen. <laughs> yeah, it was... Yeah, it's yeah. in... 
Uh, the flashback takes place in Jakarta, which was mentioned on the the TV news. The uh, largest in one of the flower first scenes. distribution. Yeah, it's the like the largest flower mill in the world. Um, <clears throat> and a scientist is brought in to take a look at a uh, a dead body. Um, that was showing like weird decomposing things and basically had been exposed to the flower directly to the the cordyceps and the it was one of the yeast. one of 14 workers that worked at the plant <clears throat> right yep yeah okay it was the but the only one that had died i think that mm -hmm. they at least had the other like 13 were just out, out there. in the world <laughs> and you know the scientist takes a look at the body does like an autopsy, pulls out some of those tendrils from the mouth that we've seen where mm -hmm. they, instead of actually just like biting and just letting like saliva transmit the disease, uh, like the tendrils are what transmits the, the fungal disease. And the most terrifying part of it was the, the scientist like pulled out the, the tendrils and was like, Oh shit. And like, ran out of the lab and was talking to a, like a military officer or a military policeman. He's like, MP. yeah, an MP, if you will, <laughs> military policeman. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> For those that didn't know what that was, <laughs> uh, I know it's a bunch of nerds listening, so you might not have, um, he's like, what's wrong? What should we do? How do we handle this? And she's like, bomb the city, bomb, bomb the city and bomb. everyone in it. Because well, she asked him, she's like, how many other people <clears throat> have been exposed to this? And he says, like, 14 or something like that. And she's like, and do you know where they are? And he's like, no. And she goes, bomb. Yeah. Bomb, bomb everything. Bomb everything. You can't let it breach the yeah, it can't edges of this city. Yeah. And, uh... Just the terrified look on both their faces, and then she goes, she starts crying, and is like, "Can somebody please bring me home? I'd like to be with my family." Yeah, <laughs> I'd like and my it, last moment spent with my family, and it's like it is holy horrifying. Shit. I really hope they do these <clears throat> openings for every single episode. Oh, I hope so too. Because one thing that you and I had talked about off screen uh, is that this is scientifically. Not that far fetched, yeah. Because there is a fungus that does this to animals. Yeah, it's a type well, of... animal, like insects and yeah. shit like that. It's a but... cold blooded, uh, yeah. things. Uh, it's a type of cordyceps mushroom. Which is why in the first episode, the <coughs> flashback, he said they say that this can't happen to people because. You know, we're war, you know, warm blooded. They can't exist in that environment. Yeah, they can't survive they, in ninety above ninety four degrees. And then the guy from the Mummy, what was his name again? I forgot it. Oh, uh, John <laughs> Henning, Hannah, Han John Hannah. Yep, you're right. Yeah, uh, he says um, unless they adapted to global warming, then they would be able to live yeah. in warmer climate. Yeah things like living things yeah, he was like yeah uh, so, exactly they can't so it's a real thing the world which got is, warmer. that's one of the coolest things about the show is that it's this is something that they took from it's not just like something someone made up and was like oh let's make it an unknown virus that wipes out humanity and their zombies this is something that's real that actually happens In on nature. our planet yeah. to smaller <clears throat> animals uh but that's what makes it scary in the that flashback in the first episode is he says if global warming were to happen and they adapted to warmer environments, what would stop them from taking over warm blooded animals? Yeah. Or humans. Yeah. Exactly. Pretty scary. Fucking terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Because Which is why this is so <clears throat> good. <laughs> the world has Other... gotten warmer. Yeah. I and mean... it's getting warmer. No yeah. matter what you believe. Science is real. Science doesn't <laughs> care about your feelings. Um, yeah, it's crazy. It's yeah, 
mm. scary. Which is why the show was so good. Yeah. Game. I guess we should say the game was so good. And the television adaption of the game is on par with how good the game was. I haven't played the game. I looked it up and I'm going to buy it on Amazon. It's like 26 bucks. Yeah. I'm buying both of them. Yeah. yeah. I I haven't looked to see if part two has been adapted for the PC. Uh from what I saw, it looks like part one has been adapted for the PC, and I think that don't I don't. Would... you have PlayStation, though? I do, but Please. I don't like having the, the physical disc, mm. uh, and I don't have the... I stopped paying for PlayStation Online a couple months ago, and eventually I'll get it back, but it's not on my priority because I've been playing a lot of PC games. So. Gotcha. My bad. No, you're fine. It's... I have a really nice monitor for my PC that I like to sit in front of and game with. So, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, this uh, show's oh. freaking crazy. Um, it's so stressful to watch. It's like anxiety it inducing. Anxiety. That's a good word for it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's so well done. We don't hate what's her face as much. Ellie, played by Ellie. Uh, Bella Ramsey. Yeah. A little um, better. A little better episode too. Little, yeah. The the big thing that you had pointed out is that, like, when she curses, it feels very forced. Yeah. But it kind of makes sense also because, like, you know, it's a child. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, she's fourteen years old in the show and in the first part of the game. But it just was like overly forced. Yeah. In like her when dialogue. I say fuck, it just, you know, it's like fuck. Yeah. When she says fuck, it's like fuck. I'm gonna fuck. fuck. Yeah. It's like calm down, kid. <laughs> just a word. <clears throat> <laughs> but what's but yeah. cool is that even uh, Ashley Johnson, who voiced Ellie for the game, if that name sounds familiar, she also voices Pike in the Legend of Vox Machina. What? It's like it's all connected. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's like a circle. <laughs> Has even said that, like, Bella is, like, portraying Ellie so well. Like, mm. and, I mean, I agree. I think that the, her delivery on some of the lines is, seems a little forced, but, I mean, the show is so well done. I mean, there's direct scenes mm -hmm. taken from the game. Yeah. Like, them overlooking the Capitol, mm -hmm. you know, and, like... The burning house on the yeah. side of the road. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. But even from this episode, like when yeah. they're looking at the Capitol and it's like, you know, is... Can't beat this view. Yeah. She's like, oh, yeah. Jerry's still out. You know, and stuff like that. Like Even crossing that beam between the two buildings. Yeah. Right before that scene uh, is straight out of the game. Yeah. It's... Yeah. I mean, it, it makes sense. Uh, <clears throat> the One of the creators of the game is an executive producer and director. That makes sense. So, <clears throat> Cause there's like, I I've been watching, I haven't played the game, but I've been watching some of the gameplay on YouTube, uh, just so that I have like a more connected, like way to talk about this until I play the games, mm -hmm. uh, which will w likely be not until after the show is over. Um, so I've been trying to like be more accurate, like when we talk about it and, uh, yeah, I mean, even the scene in the in the building where Joel, Ellie, and Tess mm -hmm. are like running, like running from the zombies, and someone made a joke about it, and it was very true. It was like Ellie and Tess are just like hiding the whole time, while Joel is just getting fucked. <laughs> <laughs> like he's just like fighting these fucking fungus zombies, fombies, whatever you want to call them. Fumbies. Uh, Fungies. <laughs> yeah. And they're just like hiding behind cabinets and shit. And it's like, somebody help this guy. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, that's directly from the game. I mean, literally like shot for shot watching the gameplay and watching the TV show. It was like so... Even the pacing of the dialogue. Yeah. And, you know, some of the dialogue's a little adjusted. Because, obviously, the game is a little bit older. 
<laughs> no one cares if we can see your beer can, Jake. <laughs> but uh, like the pacing of the dialogue, uh, like when they're in the the hotel that's flooded on the mm, bottom part. That part was cool. And yeah, like Ellie, like trying to push the like the bellhop cart, and like as mm-hmm. she's like talking about it, and then. Uh, like the frog jumps on the the piano, like yeah, it's a heavy directly frog directly from yeah. the game. It's so crazy. That part was cool. I a couple things I liked from that part uh, was one when Joel walks in the water and uh, Ellie is like, "I can't swim," and he goes, "So?" and she goes, "So I can't swim," and he like jumps and he's like, "It's like." waist high like yeah. you're fine <laughs> and she was like she like rolls her eyes like a teenager would uh, yeah. and then when she's like pretending to check in at the front desk and joel is like you're a weird kid <laughs> <laughs> but i thought that that scene was also super powerful because it reminds you that she is a kid yeah like yeah. she has been thrown into this situation as Someone that doesn't have a lot of life mm-hmm. experience. I mean, even before the outbreak, Joel was, you know, a, a veteran of yeah. of war. Like, he's had training, and then this happens, and he's gone through so much. Before the character of Ellie was even born. Mm-hmm. Which... Yeah. it, And I think that that also kind of changed his perspective, too. Because, I mean, he's kind of been an asshole. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, asshole. Pedro Pascal is still daddy. No, no, no. But... the character <laughs> yeah. is, he's, yeah, he's total He's dick. a dick. Yeah. 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 Uh, what was so awesome, though, is we got a good look at the clickers. Mm-hmm. Oh. And why they call them that. Yeah, they're heavily <laughs> mutated, uh, infected. They no longer have eyes. Basically, the fungus is growing out of their face. So they use, like, echolocation. Yeah. It's very much like um, a venereal disease. They look like they have... uh, Some people would call it cauliflower dick. (laughs) Didn't the lead singer of um, The Used have this? I, I don't know. Because I think it they sounds were... like Bert, because he used to be a very yeah. crungy, like crunchy I just remember watching uh, the Osbournes, and Kelly Osbourne and him were dating for a while, and I Sharon forgot. Osbourne was like, "I heard people call you cauliflower dick," and uh, her daughter was like, "Mom." <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Anyways, they look <laughs> like that. Look it up. <laughs> Look up or don't. The, the clickers. Maybe not cauliflower dick. No, look up cauliflower dick so you can see the comparison. Okay, now I'm intrigued. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> just, look, just look down, bro. It looks normal. I think. Just being a, <laughs> just being a Joel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. We made him into a verb. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, anyways. They look like fungus. Like their heads are like mush- yeah. mushrooms, basically. Yeah. It right? kind of looks like... Yeah. Uh, but veiny. Ch- <laughs> and triumphant. <laughs> uh, like chicken of the woods. Uh, kind of like oyster mushrooms. <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> but veins all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. But they are terrifying. Yeah, it is. I mean, they're terrifying in the game. Uh, and, like, again, neither of us have played it, but, like, watching game play and stuff like mm-hmm. that, it's just, they are fucking terrifying. Oh, yeah. And the cool part in the show is, like, those are just, like, prosthetics. Like, mm-hmm. so little of the clickers are CGI. Like, they hired, like, circus acrobats. And put all this like makeup on them and showed them how to walk and to match the game. And then they did it. Uh, in an interview I saw, uh, I wonder with... if you could do that with guns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, look. Circle. <laughs> it's a circle. And it's a, it's a full circle. <laughs> <clears throat> it's like we have come full circle, you know? Uh, <laughs> but I did... That wasn't scripted, by the no, way. <laughs> no, Thus, that's how funny we we're are. We're funny, damn it. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, but I did see in an interview with... Uh, Bella Ramsey and Pedro Pascal talking about the clickers because before they filmed that, they didn't let them see them. Ooh, I like that. They and... did that with um, <clears throat> the It movie. Oh, with Pennywise, yeah? Yeah, so the kids didn't actually see what... Um, um, Was it Bill Sarsgaard? Bill Sarsgaard, yeah, Sarsgaard. Uh, looked like. So their reaction to him the first time uh, with them screaming... And like, ah! like that was yeah. real because they hadn't seen him yet. Yeah, and that yeah, it was. I think that's cool. <laughs> I like that they did that for this too. Yeah, awesome. and Peter Pascal was even saying he's like, I almost shit my pants. <laughs> like it was terrifying. Yeah, it's that's cool. This show is just glorious. They're doing it so well. <clears throat> Unfortunately, there is a death. Tess, Tess is dead. Uh, D-E-D like D E D dead. Like O M G dead. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. She, she <clears throat> well gets she, bit. She got bit from. Well, we skipped over a, in that same scene. Uh, Ellie also gets bit, and we don't know that Tess is bit at that moment. But Ellie right. is like, well, if one of us was gonna get bit, good thing it's me because she's immune. That's right. Yeah. And then they show later uh, when they're inside of the the Capitol building. The Capitol, yeah. Um, that... Tess is talking, and Ellie is like, "Oh fuck, she's infected." And then Joel is like, "Show me," and she like pulls her collar down, and she's got a bite mark. Yeah. No bueno. Yeah. But she does. <clears throat> she sacrifices herself. Mm-hmm. Uh, to kill a lot of infected because they trigger a horde because there's basically like an underground network or like hive mind brain. Which of... Tess explains in this episode to Ellie, which is really cool. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, it's <clears throat> basically like the, the root system. Um, you know, you could step on it in one part and miles away, it would know where you are. Mm-hmm. And this was a really cool scene yeah. when it happens. Because there's just like a random infected person. They kill him and he falls onto like a clump of root. And then you see okay. the, yeah, like start to wrap around it and <clears> realize <throat> that it's dead. So it triggers a horde. And so Joel and Ellie run. Uh, Tess is dumping barrels of like flammable liquids carrying a grenade, mm-hmm. uh, things like that, and the horde comes well, we in also, there. <clears throat> we also get a really important line, sorry, from Tess to Joel, and she is like, basically, Joel is, Joel's an asshole, and he doesn't really give a shit about Ellie, uh, and yeah. Tess is like, look, this means something. This girl is immune. This means something. You have to save her. Promise me. And he's kind of skeptical, and then, like, as the horde is, like, coming, she's, like, she grabs him by the arm, and she's, like, promise me, save who you can. And then he grabs Ellie, and Ellie's, like, we can't leave her here, and he just, like, grabs her and runs uh, yeah. and leaves. Yeah, goes, like, behind. full dad mode. Like, yeah. doesn't matter, you're coming, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> there is it a... was, oh, that was yeah. good, that was probably, like, the best scene of the show, in my opinion. Yeah, it was she is like, like very like she, emotionally driven. She didn't seem Tess didn't seem too invested in the kid <clears> either, <throat> until like she was kind of like nudging Joel in the right direction, up yeah. until that point where she's like, "Fuck, I'm gonna die! Like I have to get him to fucking understand!" Like yeah. so like you, up until you can't that save point, me, she but was, you can save more. Yeah, she was kind of like, "Hey, like we should take her with us." Like she was influencing him. Until she realized she was going to die. And she's like, look, dude, listen to me. <laughs> yeah. This girl is fucking important. And you need to protect her with everything you got. Yeah, because Tess was <laughs> always kind of like the one in between yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. 
you really got? <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> uh, but yeah, so just setting that up. It's very emotional. It's a, it's a really good scene. He grabs her, like you said, dad mode. Just like doesn't look back. Grabs Ellie and just bolts. Yeah, knowing that Tess is gonna die. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, there I didn't is mean to interrupt you, but no, I just you're felt totally like that needed to be. You're you're right. That is <laughs> a heavily important part uh, towards the end of this episode. <clears throat> and then, you know, the horde comes in. Tess is trying to like create a diversion. She gets a well. First, she gets like pinned down by. Uh, you know, and infected, and he's just like, I'm gonna kiss you now. Well, she was trying to light it, bef- like, while he was walking up to oh, her. Oh, right, yeah. She was trying oh, to it light wasn't the... a grenade, you're right. There was just grenades there, but she was trying to light a lighter to drop on the fuel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, there's a very uncomfortable, like, fungal kiss. Mm. Uh, you know, just getting all... All of the fungus into the orifice. Yeah. Orifices. Like a... they, they, we call that a yeast infection. Yeast infection. <laughs> the balls made me laugh because I grabbed it and they hit me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> we need a price check on Vagisil in uh, aisle seven. Again, that's Vagisil. We got somebody here with a extra, little extra. If you know, you know. We'll leave it at that. I don't want to say it. I don't want to say the rest of it. Yeah, but we'll leave it at it's that. It's a little bit extra. <laughs> Me, myself, and Irene. Look it up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just. But in all seriousness, it was a very uncomfortable scene. But Somebody then... pointed out online. Uh, that's why I was like, "Oh, I should say something," but I didn't want to interrupt you. Uh, that the lighter that Tess uh, eventually does light mm-hmm. is the same lighter for, that. Uh, um. Oh, what's his name? What's the dude's name in Uncharted? Uh, Drake. Nathan Na- Drake. Nathan Drake. It's the same lighter, same Zippo. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I saw it online. I, I again, I didn't discover this. I saw it online and I was like, oh, dope. It's like a cool like PlayStation. Yeah, because both thing. of those are PlayStation yeah. exclusive games. That's yeah. That's a cool, uh, like tie. Yeah. Anyways, cool. go ahead. Sorry. Well, then she blows herself up in a bunch of the infected inside of the Capitol building. That's where the episode ends. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the song that's playing uh, as they're watching the fire. Uh, sorry, I didn't. I didn't bring this up. It just like sparked. We didn't start the fire no, because Tess did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's burning. it's the song that I guess plays at the end of. The Last of Us Part Two in the game. Oh, nice. Okay, I didn't. Um, know. Yeah. I haven't played it. Oh. Yeah, uh, I didn't either. I just I heard it and I was like, it sounds on par. It's probably from the game, and I guess it's like a very important song from Part Two. So nice, which is cool. Yeah, this show's so good. Oh my god, I'm excited. It. I mean, it's Sunday, so we're gonna watch episode three tonight. Oh yeah, I can't fucking wait. Yeah, we're gonna finish recording this. I'm gonna watch. The sixth episode of Legends of Vox Machina, make myself dinner, and then watch The Last of Us. Mm-hmm. What time is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, we've got a few hours until. I also got to make dinner. Yeah. Well, help make dinner. <laughs> Basically, I just cut veggies and Nicole makes dinner. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, cut this up. I got everything else. I'm like, oh, she's a really Lord. good cook. Yeah. Not saying you're not. You've never made me food, but she has. Lies. Oh, you've made burgers. We've done burgers. And? And what else? Last summer, bro. I made, what was it? Jalapeno poppers and uh, what else did <clears throat> we have on the grill? Yeah, we made something on the grill last didn't summer. Didn't she prep that stuff? I don't know. I was just kind of sitting there drinking. I asked if I could help and you're like, do this. Yeah. And it was like, wash vegetables. And I was like, okay. I like washed them and handed them to you, and you're like, "Okay, cool." No, 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 no. Yeah, no, no. We did the <clears throat> we did the hobo meal. Hobo meal. Oh yeah, we did I was the... like cutting potatoes and stuff like that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hol- yeah, we did jalapeno poppers. That I don't. Did hobo we do potatoes? And I was that when we did or something? I don't remember. Was that when we did kebabs, or was that when we did the the vegan juices? 
No, no, no. That was when we did burgers, the Impossible Burgers. That was... I don't remember. It was like... Last, I have a picture. Last fall. I can fi- yeah. yeah. Our listeners don't care. Yeah. No, that's a good <laughs> Sorry, point. Sorry, we got off track so, there. <laughs> go watch The Last of Us. It's fantastic. Episode... Th- well, it airs Sunday Sunday nights, uh, I think, 9 o'clock. Um, 8. I think it starts at 8 here, right? Something like that. Or, yeah. It's, I don't really know fantastic. that's Eastern, Central, whatever. Yeah. I just means... I usually wait until nine o'clock anyway, so maybe I'm watching it right when it airs. Uh, I think it starts at eight. I think yeah. we watched it at eight o'clock last okay. week. Okay. Yeah. Well, go watch it, everyone. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's kind of all that we have. So we're gonna go ahead and close out this episode. But before we close out this episode, Chad. What? I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, uh, we have a couple of honorable mentions. Uh, you go. So I mentioned it last week that I started it, and the OCD tendencies in me made me finish it. Uh, I finished watching The Warrior Nun on Netflix. <clears throat> it was very frustrating. Um, the big like reveal and climax that leads to a cliffhanger uh, at the end of season one never get to see the the actual outcome you just kind of like hear them talk about it uh in throughout season two which is very frustrating because it looked like it was going to be badass um and then the big reveal or twist of season two i called within the first 30 minutes of episode one of season two uh which was also very frustrating but the one redeeming thing was of season two was that the action sequences were so cool. Think John Wick, but with a bunch of nuns. It was pretty sweet. Um, and then also the show itself, because it was canceled from Netflix. Oh, um, oh no. Who would have guessed? <laughs> um, the way that it ended was like, oh, there's there's more to come. But it was almost like a Dark Knight Rises. Like, oh, here's a good jumping off point. Or. <laughs> and. Uh, oh, that sounds familiar. Yeah. It's kind of like another show that we just finished watching. Hunters? Yeah. Yeah. Literally the final scene from the Dark Knight Rises was yeah. how Hunters 2, uh, season 2 ended. Only no Michael Caine at the end. I was really bummed. I was really hoping to see him sitting there with his little espresso cup and go. What? Oh, I was just pretending to do the music from. Because oh. after he does that, <laughs> then it starts playing the Batman theme. <clears throat> and Joseph, oh, yeah. Joseph Gordon love it. Joseph? Joseph. Joseph. Gord- Joseph Gordon love it. Uh, like swings into the Batcave. and. Flurgan. <laughs> um, uh, what about you what do you have for some honorable mentions I got a few things this week um, <clears throat> excuse me uh, I made Nicole watch uh, Stir of Echoes with me um, old movie with Kevin Bacon um, seriously one of my favorite like horror movies it's not like overly scary it's just kind of cool um, spoiler alert uh yeah, he basically has his wife's sister who's like uh clairvoyant or whatever, kinda like puts him in a trance and ever since she puts him in a trance, he's open to like ghosts and stuff like that. Mm. And he finds out that there's a girl buried in his basement and her ghost is like trying to get him to like figure out who killed her. It's really good. Oh. It's really, really good. Yeah. Um we also watched Hacksaw Ridge. Uh, Such a good movie. Anybody, anybody, it's a great movie. Anybody who knows me knows that I am a Andrew Garfield fucking fanboy. Uh, <laughs> he, he I love Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield. Yeah. <laughs> and it, what did you say? You stan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's... Mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love Andrew Garfield. And it's a Mel Gibson movie. I mean, The movie got... Like a seven minute like standing ovation when it came out 
Like, it's really, really good. It's based on a true story. Uh, check it out. I don't want to ruin anything. It's cool. Uh, and I don't want to talk too long. The other thing that I watched was uh, the first two episodes of that 90s show uh, for people our age. If you know, you know, that 70s show. I grew up on that shit. I loved it. It was fantastic. Um, I was a, I was uh, reluctantly excited about this, that 90s show, um, because nostalgia, I'm like, dope. But it's not going to be the same thing. So there, there are some cameos from the original cast. And for me, that's the only good thing about the show. Uh, there's some funny moments between like Eric, Donna, Kitty, and Red. Um, Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis make a minute and 30 second cameo. Other than that, the kids, the new set of kids, which are basically Eric and Donna's daughter, Kelso and um, Jackie's son. Uh, and that, the, I mean, there's another foreign exchange student. Uh, they're over the top, cheesy, kind of annoyingly cheesy. Um, I don't know. Maybe I just aged out of it and like it's just not that good to me because it's like I don't know. Yeah. But. To I haven't watched it but it seemed like it was just going to be like full, a one-off Fuller House but for that 70s show. Yeah, basically. <clears throat> but the, like I said like Kitty and Red are in it, uh Eric and Donna are in the first episode along with uh Jackie and Kelso. Like and those interactions were awesome and like really like felt like it also like Topher Grace. What the hell? He must be a vampire. He's got the <laughs> Keanu Reeves syndrome. He looks exactly the same. Yeah. They put that haircut on him and back in his Eric Foreman clothing. He looks exactly the same. He doesn't look like he aged at all. It's crazy. But anyways, um, I've only watched the first two episodes. I can't really sink or sail it yet. I'll finish watch again. Like you said, your OCD, my OCD <laughs> yeah. will make me finish it. <clears throat> uh, as of right now, not really sold on it, but check it out, I guess. Yeah. If you're into that kind of thing. Well, this comes to the, the part of the episode where we tell you that we love you. And then Jake give loves to say, give us your money, please. Um, I want that money. Dun, 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 dun. That's what I want. Yeah. Yeah, if if you like what we're doing and you want to support us, um, we do have a monthly subscription uh, through buymeacoffee.com. You get some exclusive merch, some members-only uh, exclusives. Um, as more people join, we will put more and more into those behind-the-scenes and exclusive uh, like interviews, uncut episodes, things like that. That will be available to members-only. Um, if you don't want to give us a monthly subscription, we get it. We wish you would, but we get it. Uh, we you... also have some kind of big things coming up. We don't want to talk about yeah. it yet until we but do more. We but we made a lot of progress in the since just the last episode. So yeah, uh, we have we have some big things coming, um, and that money helps. And that money you know, helps. And when we're rich, get you some early <laughs> access and more behind the scenes on the stuff outside of the podcast that we're doing. Yeah. Um, if you don't want to do that, we, I mean, we get it. Uh, you can do uh, like one-time donations through it. However, we would recommend if you're just going to give us money once, go to our website at allthingsnerdpodcast.com and get yourself some merch because that still <laughs> helps us and, and you get something out of it instead of just being like, here's some money. Um, Agreed. Yeah. It's very exciting. We yeah. love you guys. Yeah. And girls. We love all of you. We love all of you. We and love doing this. Yeah. That's the, the That's main thing. The, yeah. And we don't make money uh, nope. from this. Uh, <clears throat> we haven't talked too in-depth in it, but it's going to take a long time before we pocket any sort of money that comes in through it. There's just too much that we want to do and put back into the show and give back to our listeners. So we're not trying to, to take your money so that we can go buy stuff and get rich and party. Uh, <laughs> Cause it's not us, but thank you. We love you. And Jake. 
Am I saying it? Go for it. Sure. This has been the All Things Nerd podcast. I brought it in, so I thought oh, you yeah, would close it out. Yeah.